Hi, I'm Antonia. This is Universally Me. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta. And check out my Patreon where I post exclusive videos plus universal memorabilia from my family's private collection. This year has been a year. Every prediction that I could have had for 2020 is out the window. Anytime that I think that something else can't happen, something else happens. In a parallel universe where summer isn't canceled, the Olympics would be starting right now. Which feels weird to say even because it's like we forgot about it a little, which makes sense. But for me as a kid, I did gymnastics for almost 14 years and I always thought that I was like, Olympic bound. So the Olympics was always a really exciting time for me. I would watch and dream about if it was me up there and anyway, this video is not about me and gymnastics. This video is about Universal and the Olympics. And I am going to give away the end at the beginning because I don't think that you can hear the end and then not want to know more. The story is just too cool. It's too random. So here it is. The Olympic basketball team that won the gold medal in the 1936 Olympics was comprised of Universal Studios employees. Universal Studios is responsible for the first ever gold medal winning team. Well, half of it at least. Also featured in this video are Hitler, an oil refinery, and some moral dilemmas that I still don't know the answers to. And lastly, before I really start, I would just like to give credit to Andrew Moranis' book, Games of Deception, which really helped me a lot when I was putting this video together. It goes into the entire story in way more detail. It's so informative, so important, so I really recommend that you read it. I'm gonna put a link to it on Amazon below, uh, and you can also find it in most major bookstores. And I believe that Andrew and I are going to be doing an interview together soon, so I'll fill you guys in on all of those details once I have them. I sometimes forget that even though the Olympics originated in ancient Greece, they were only pretty recently revived, and they're still adding new sports all the time. Basketball too is not an ancient sport. It was created in 1891 by James Naismith. Inventing the sport was part of a goal to bring people closer to Christianity through athletics. Fast forward to 1912, my uncle Carl Lemley, a German Jewish immigrant, starts Universal Studios. He was very much a family man and he made Universal a family business. He was always hiring friends and family in different positions on the lot. And because of this, when you were at the studio, it felt like your neighborhood. By the 1930s, Universal had grown to one of the biggest studios in the world. Carl had a real knack for publicity, and in the two or two and a half decades that he had been in the industry, he had invented the movie star and invented the studio tour, and he was now solidifying Universal's place in history with the monster movies like Dracula and Frankenstein. But still, the studio was full of Carl's friends and family, so in addition to normal work and events, there was also the Universal City Club, which would host dinners and parties, and put on different sports leagues like softball and bowling and basketball. The basketball team called themselves the Universals and was run by none other than Jack Pierce. And I know every monster lover here knows exactly who that is. For anybody who doesn't, Jack Pierce is the makeup artist responsible for some of the most iconic looks in history, including Frankenstein, the mummy, the Wolfman, a ton of other Universal looks. I love picturing that amidst running the makeup department, Jack Pierce was also running and recruiting for this basketball team. Now here's where there's an interesting spin to the basketball team and where it connects back to my uncle Carl's gift for promoting. Carl realized that the basketball team could be a really great tool to market his films. So Jack Pierce would go scout for players around LA. They would get hired on as crew for films and then they would travel to games and use those to promote Universal and its upcoming movies. They had a banner that they'd bring promoting their movies and the producers and a whole bunch of pre-show stunts and shenanigans, like one player who would run around in the audience dressed as Frankenstein's monster to promote the Bride of Frankenstein. 
But the Universals really were the best team. They won game after game and really made a name for themselves. So now we're coming up on 1936. Basketball is about to be in the Olympics for the first time ever. The Olympic Committee just needs to figure out who's gonna represent Team USA. Many tournaments were held all over the country to determine the elite eight teams who then went head to head against each other at Madison Square Garden. The final two teams were combined to make the Olympic team. And I mean, I didn't keep it a secret. So the first spot went to the Universals and the second went to the Globe Refiners from Kansas. And together they would represent the United States. But this is actually where the story took a few more turns that I really wasn't expecting the first time I learned about it. For starters, the tournament to determine the Olympic team wasn't exactly fair. Black players weren't allowed to compete at all, and one of the top teams in the country decided to boycott because their team had five Jewish players, and oh right, this is the 1936 Olympics happening in Nazi Germany. There was a large faction of the United States that actually felt we should boycott the 1936 Olympics altogether. In fact, Carl himself withdrew his support for the basketball team right before the qualifying tournament. Carl was a proud Jew and he still held close ties to his hometown in Germany, but he was actively fighting against the Nazi regime, actively working to get Jews out of Germany. He was not about to send his own employees over there. But a boycott was never going to happen because the American Olympic Committee president was an anti-Semite who stood a lot to gain financially and in status by seeing the games through. He publicly argued that we should just keep politics out of it and that the IOC was really running the show and not Germany, so it was pointless to meddle. It became a rallying cry by those who wanted to compete that the boycotters were un-American. The Germans who really wanted the Americans there, partly because their athletes were known to be some of the best, and also because the American tourists and American media were vital for Germany's propaganda to be effective. Just one week after the Universals clinched their Olympic spot, Carl Lemley lost Universal Studios to Standard Capital. You should actually watch my video about how my family lost Universal Studios because it's a pretty interesting story. But the reason I bring it up here is because it wasn't really up to Carl anymore if the team wanted to go. The new owners weren't too thrilled at the idea of the Universal team going to Nazi Germany either, but they did say that they were allowed to compete if they paid their own way. The Universals tried unsuccessfully to put on a couple fundraisers, but ultimately director James Whale and animator Walter Lance stepped up to fund the team. I feel like this is the right time to mention that one of the players on the Universals was Jewish. His name was Sam Balter, and I can't imagine what he must have been going through trying to decide whether or not to play. Some people told him that if he went to Germany, he would be a traitor to his faith, and he might never work in Hollywood again because so many studio heads were Jewish. On the other side, if he didn't compete, well, that might be seen as un-American, or maybe he's letting his country down. And still others just said to keep politics out of it and go to Nazi Germany and have fun. Ultimately, Sam Balter did decide to go. He was hoping for an opportunity to represent the Jewish people well and to show that they weren't weak or inferior. But when he got there, it was pretty scary. There was a heavy Nazi presence everywhere, and that anti-Semitic American Olympic Committee president I was talking about kept giving speeches and making comments about how great the Nazis were and how it was just mischief makers back home trying to stand in the way of their noble cause. When Sam left the Olympic Village, he saw newspapers with the stereotypical caricatures of Jews and defamatory headlines. It made him question if he'd made the right decision by going. As for the games, they went fine. Spain dropped out pretty last minute because a civil war broke out. A lot of countries were still figuring out the fundamentals and the ref's calls were wildly inconsistent. And then rain destroyed the court before the final match between the US and Canada. So they relocated courts, but it was still really muddy and full of puddles and the ball was really heavy and slippery and hard to hold and pass. Ultimately, the US won and the final score was 19 to eight. While the win was amazing, the excitement was pretty short-lived. 
Germany threw a final closing celebration as one last opportunity to spread their propaganda, and then the players headed home, many without money in their pockets and without jobs to return to. Some of the players had to play in exhibition games in the U.S. just to fund their trips back to Kansas and California. A few players and coaches went home wondering if they made the right decision to go. Yes, it was an honor to represent the United States to compete in the Olympics, but at what cost or what did they have to support in exchange? Honestly, I don't know what I would do in that situation, especially as a Jewish person, right? Because if I were to boycott, if I don't go, yeah, I've stood my ground and that's great, but that's exactly what Hitler wants, right? The last thing that he wants is me there competing in his Olympics and maybe taking home a medal. On the other side, if I do go, maybe I'm putting my life in danger, but I'm also giving them an opportunity to say, look, see, we've got Jewish people here. We're treating them great. We're great people. And that's not really the right move either. Ugh. Yeah, I, I really don't know. Nazis suck. What do you think that you would do in this instance? It is still so cool though to get to add to the list of amazing things in Universal's history that the Universal basketball team won the gold medal in the Olympics in the very first Olympics that ever even had basketball. So yeah, wow. Thank you again so much, Andrew Moranis and the book Games of Deception, which again was such a huge part of putting this video together. I have the Amazon link below, so check that out. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Antonia Carlotta. And I will have some more content for all of you on Patreon, so check that out as well. Bye.